There's a purpose in life while we're living boom, boom. We share a common goal to make it to heaven boom, boom. Shining our lights so others might see We've got a purpose in life We're working hard To be with you Now, John Tillman, Jr. Well, good morning. I certainly appreciate you listening week to week and enjoying the Blessing Connection. And I want you to know I've enjoyed you listening. But today, I'm telling you today, you're going to really enjoy the Blessing Connection. All the way from Florida, Brother Wesley T. Leonard. Brother Leonard, introduce yourself. Good morning. I want to talk to you today from an interesting topic entitled... The three things you need for worship is found in Genesis 22, verses 1 through 6. May God bless you and may the word of God enhance your life. Thank well, you. Well, get ready. Here it comes. You're going to enjoy it. God bless. To the beginning, the origin of man and religion is found in the book of Genesis. You'll find these Mercedes in your word. And it came to pass after these things. That God did test or tempt Abraham. He said unto him, Abraham, thy son, thy only son Isaac, uh, underline that, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Uh, underline that phrase. Uh, go to a place I will tell thee of. Abraham rose up early in the morning. Sisters, when you're looking for a man, get a man to get up early in the morning. If he sleep to Jerry Springer, come on TV, he probably ain't going to be much good to you. If he ain't on the 11 to 7 shift and he slipped to noon, that's a sign. Some of y'all want to know if he a Scorpio or a Libra. Girl, let me give you a sign. If he won't work, that's a sign. If he sleep to midday, I wish I had a church in here. Now, y'all trying to figure out, can I preach? And I'm trying to figure out, do you know good preaching when you hear it? He got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, Isaac his son, and a clave of wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Now, now he's going to worship, but he's going to the place where God told him to go. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and Isaac will go up yonder and worship and come again to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son took the fire in his hand and a knife and they both went up together uh, smile take your seat I need to talk to you about the three things you need for worship beloved abundantly clear it is to me Moses is the author of this book of beginnings those of you who know your Bible know that Moses authored the first five books of the Bible. Yes. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Commonly called in theological circles as the books of the law, the Torah of the Pentateuch. This discipline in the Bible will find us in the patriarchal age of history. God looking for some lineage. God looking for some genealogy. God looking for a progeny, a way to bring his son Jesus. He calls Abram from Ur of the Chaldees. Sends him down to Haran of Mesopotamia. And you know the story that Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac had twin boys, Esau and Jacob. And from Jacob came the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, if you put this text under the crucible of investigation, uh, if we were to do a quick expositor of this discipline in the Bible, 
Abraham was at one point 99 years old. His wife Sarah was 90 years old. And they were to have a son of promise. Now, now come here, God knows. This is way before the days of medicinal help. Uh, uh, a matter of fact, Sarah said to her husband, uh, you old and I'm old. Uh, I don't want you and you don't want me. Uh, you got to understand when, with man, when things are impossible, always remember with God, all things are possible. In this text, we see God's plan, God's purpose, and God's power. Let us trail the tapestry of this text today. You'll see that uh, God called Abram to Mount Moriah. Now, there he puts Abraham to an ultimate test. God tests his sincerity, his loyalty, and his faith. There is a showdown on Mount Moriah. God said to Abraham, it's time to put up or shut up. And I came all the way from Florida to tell y'all in Houston, if you live long enough in life, there will come a point and a time that your faith will be tested. Everything valuable to you in life at some point will be tested. Your faith will be tested. Your family will be tested. Your finances will be tested. Your friendships will be tested. Your marriage will be tested. Your loyalty, if you live long enough, you will be sitting on the front row of a funeral and the occupant in the casket will be somebody you love. If you live long enough, life has a way of testing you. God put Abraham to the ultimate test. Now notice the verbiage. Notice the lexicon. Notice the language in the text. God says to Abraham, take thy son, thine only son Isaac, up to the mountain and offer him as a sacrifice in worship. Well, you do know when God said, take your only son Isaac, you do know when God said that, that Abraham did have another son. Oh, y'all slow right here. I'm trying to figure out which side I need to preach to. Is it over here? Is it over here? Or y'all down here? You do know when this was written, that Abraham and Sarah, uh, not Abraham and Sarah, but Abraham did have another son. Because he was 75 years old when God called him uh, to have uh, the son of promise. As a matter of fact, God said to Abraham, look up in the heavens and see if you can count the stars. If you can count the stars, that's how much I'm going to bless you. Look at your sea. And then he said, go down to the seashore. If you can count the grains of sand on the seashore, that's how I'm going to bless you. You're going to be the father of all nations. But in the process of waiting for the son of promise, uh, Sarah got weary. Y'all read your Bible? She said to Abraham something I've never heard a woman say before or since. She said to her man, her boo, her husband, I ain't about it, you ain't about it. Go lay down, have relation with a trick. Okay. This is how we do it. Okay. Uh, 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 she said, I'm not making this up. It's in your Bible. She said, I got a beautiful handmaid named Hagar. Y'all read your Bible? Uh, she, she is a black, bronze, beautiful handmaid. I, I don't want you no more. I ain't about this promise. Go lay down with her. Now, I have never heard my wife, your wife, your wife, your wife. I ain't never heard of a sister girl saying to her man, her husband, go lay down with a young Tender on that. <laughs> Say amen when you can. But it's right there in your Bible. And I'm mad at Abraham. Because if it would have been me, I would have said, no, baby, you're enough for me. But I don't see nowhere where Abraham argued with her. <laughs> it's going to be a long week right here if y'all don't get with the program. Now listen, beloved, it's right there in your Bible. 
And the Bible says he laid down with Hagar and they produced a son named Ishmael. And Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. And you can forget, Obama can forget it, the United States can forget about making peace between Israel and the Arabs because the Bible says when he was born that he was a wild man and that from that day forward every man will be at his throat and he will be at every man's throat. That's why you got Al-Qaeda, that's why you got ISIS, that's why you got Hezbollah. That's why you got terrorists. Because it's a fulfillment of what the scripture says in the beginning. But God did say, since he's your son, and I promise to bless all your children, I'm going to bless Ishmael too. That's why the Arabs sit on the world's oil supply. Because God had the, y'all ain't got quiet of me. That's why when your gas, $4 a gal gallon, is going to the sons of Ishmael. And when this text is written, Ishmael is over 20 years old, but God says to Abraham, take your only son, because the reason God says take your only son is because God don't recognize what he don't authorize. God said that you and Sarah would have a son. And isn't it amazing how we gonna help God sometime? God make us a promise and we gonna do it our way. And don't we mess up every time? But God don't recognize what he don't authorize. Now brethren, I gotta tell you, God may not recognize your other children, but the state of Texas does. <laughs> say amen when you can. You, don't you go downtown tomorrow talking about Brother Leonard say God don't recognize what he don't authorize. If you got some children somewhere, you better get a job and take care of them. I see this is probably both of my visits to God knows my first and my last. <laughs> and if I'm in the doghouse, I might as well bark. Woof! God does not recognize what he does not authorize. And some of our religious friends need to get that memo. If God does not authorize it, God does not recognize it. And, and, and you can do what you want. This is America, Jack. You got the right and the privilege to do whatever you want. But if you want God to recognize it, you better make sure God authorizes it. Well, beloved, you know the story. He lays Isaac on the altar stretches forth his hand, takes a knife to offer sacrifice because in the Old Testament, you could not worship God without leaving a sacrifice. And you know the story, Brother Tillman, as Abraham's faith was realized on Mount Moriah. We always talk about Abraham's faith, but listen, folk, it took more faith for Isaac to lay there than for Abraham to say amen you can. Now, you do know Isaac is not an infant at approximately at the time of this text, he's a teenager. He's between 16 and 18 years old. He's not an infant who can lay there docile. It takes more faith to take a knife than it does to give a knife. See, man, Isaac is the one who's got radical faith. And I came by to tell you today that Abraham imputed, as the Bible says in Hebrews, that if he slain Isaac, that God would raise him up again. And you know the story, he went down ready to stab a kill his own son. And God called out of heaven with a loud melodious voice, Abraham, Abraham, and he stayed Abraham's hand and he did not slay the boy. And at that moment, Brother Tillman, there was a ram who had his head caught in the thicket. Oh, y'all miss your shout. There's Jesus right there. There was a ram with his head caught in the thicket because he took that ram and killed him in the place of his son. Oh, there's the gospel right there. Because when Jesus died, you do remember he had a crown of thorns on his head. He was our ram or our lamb who had his head in the thorns just like this ram in the Old Testament. And he died in our place just like this ram died in Isaac's place. If you can see that, see what God did to Y'all got quiet on me. Well, beloved, 
He offered that ram and then he called the place where he was Jehovah Jireh, which means God will provide. And out of all of his descriptive names in the Old Testament, I love Jehovah Jireh. I know they called him Elohim. I, I know they called him Yahweh. I, I know they called him El Shaddai. I, I know they called him Jehovah Nisi. I know they called him Je Jehovah Rapka. I know they called him Jehovah Shalom. I know they called him Jehovah Tistanu. I know they called him Jehovah Shalma. But I love Jehovah Jireh for it means the Lord will provide. Now, you ain't got to say nothing right long in here because I have church about myself. I know for myself the Lord will provide. Is there anybody else in here today who has a personal testimony that the Lord will provide? I can say right now without hesitation or without reservation, the Lord will provide. You ain't got to say amen. I don't need no cosigner right now. I don't need no affirmation or confirmation. I know for myself, after 54 years on this celestial ball called earth, I know my God will provide. I can say without hesitation uh, and without reservation, it's an irrefutable, indisputable, unguiloundable fact that God will provide. Anybody know besides me the Lord will provide? You may be broke, busted, and disgusted and can't be trusted, but the Lord will provide. You may not have a dressed up nickel or naked dime, but the Lord will provide. I'm trying to tell you that bling bling and bing bing a bling bling and ching ching don't mean a thing if you don't know the king, because the Lord will provide. I'm trying to tell you I'd rather have a garbage bag in heaven than a good your bag in hell because the Lord will I said the Lord will provide I said the Lord will provide anybody else in here know the Lord will he will provide I need to move with phonetic speed let me let me tell you in my elementary and in a competent way let me share with you the three things you need for worship that's found in this text uh, first of all, you need to know that God is worthy of worship. Uh, some folk in the Church of Christ didn't get the memo. Uh, if anybody ought to be some ha happy folks, it ought to be us. Uh, I'm not for anarchy and jump. Let, let me tell you a story, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, two years ago, my son would tell you, I had a stroke. Uh, preaching at home, uh, I'm gone so much, so when I'm home, I have to preach. And, and I'm preaching hard, and one Sunday, I didn't, this two years ago, this month, or in February, it was two years ago, and I had a, I had a stroke. Uh, uh, at, I'm at the church, preaching. My wife told me that morning, she said, you don't look well, your eyes are glazy, but I get up and go for a, a walk every morning, my son will tell you, and that's my devotional time. She said, you don't look good, you all not good, let's go to the emergency room. Well, I'm an alpha male. I got high level of testosterone. You know, men are crazy. Uh, see, women, when they, when, when they told they are hurt, they go to the hospital. We sit on the couch with a remote control and die right there. We ain't got no better sense. Say amen when you can. That, that's how men are. That's just how we're wired, okay? And uh, uh, so my wife said, let's go. I said, I ain't going to no hospital. I said, I got to preach today. She said, baby, you don't look good. I said, I got a headache. I said, I'm preaching today. And, and she, she said, uh, I said, I'm Wesley T. Leonard. She said, fool, they make caskets your size. Uh, uh, I, I got dressed, went on to the church and preached, and I was just as confused. I, I, lost, uh, I lost my equilibrium a couple of times. And when I finished, I didn't even remember had I made my three points and all that. So I got out in the foyer, I staggered a little bit. My wife said, look, we need to go to the emergency room. It's Sunday, I don't wanna go to the emergency room. And I said, um, I'm okay. And uh, I said, did I finish my sermon? She said, yes, but you were a little confused. She said, baby, let's go. I said, I'm going home. I drove my car and she drove hers. We drove, and I drove home, didn't remember how I got home. Still wouldn't go. Uh, uh, next morning, got up, my head hurting more. I got ready to say my prayers and forgot who I was even praying to. She stopped arguing with me. She put me in the car. She takes me over to the doctor's office. They took me in an emergency. I didn't go to the hospital, I went to my doctor. I'm thinking I'm okay, Monday is my golf day. Yeah, that's my guy. I ain't finna go to no hospital. But to, to sue this woman, 
See, because when you've been married to a woman a long time, you know after a while you just need to do something to keep her. Quiet. So to make her happy, I went, I went to the doctor, and the doctor did. He said, he said Pastor Leonard, because of your history and you have high potential as an African-American male, he said, you know you was in health care. You, you, you know you need. He said, let me do uh, a CAT scan of your brain. And I said, okay, doc, to make my wife happy, make you happy. I'm on the phone with my secretary telling her to reschedule my tea time so I can tell the boys I'll be there, but I'm running late. And I'm thinking I'm fine, no problem. And, and uh, we bite the way. I'm on the phone talking, and my wife with me, and the doctor comes out with the CAT scan. Uh, after got, he said, listen, go to the emergency room right now. You're in the midst of having a stroke. And he said that the CAT scan shows that you have some lesions on your brain that you probably had a minor stroke in the past, but because your blood pressure is specifically high, uh, uh, you need to go to the emergency room right now. You're in the middle of a stroke. I see the lesion on your brain. The, the, we go to the emergency room, which is two blocks away, and for the first time in my life, I didn't have to wait in the emergency room. They didn't even get my insurance information. <laughs> they whisked me back. To the, let me tell you something. All my life, I've been complaining about waiting two or three hours in the emergency room. Come to find out, one of the biggest blessings you're going to ever have is when you got to wait in the emergency room. What you don't want to happen is what happened to me. When they don't make you wait, in, there's something seriously wrong with you. Oh, y'all done missed your shot here. They rush me to the back. They do an MRI to confirm the CAT scan. Yes, sir. You had a stroke. You're in the middle of having a stroke. We cannot drop your blood pressure precipitously. And you should have come yesterday so we can give you some TPA. That's the blood uh, busting uh, drug that would dissolve clots on you. And, and I didn't. So I was hot headed. So I didn't be able to get that. So then the doctor says, You just need to pray. I don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully, you don't go down this way. You go, And the elders came up to the church. Members came, prayed with me. I was there for days and nights in the hospital and after four days I was so blessed I didn't lose any equilibrium after they checked my brain they checked my speech and you know I earned a living by talking I didn't use any of my linguistic skills I, 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 did, I was not um, uh, diminished on either side I had no facial distortion I, I walked I, I even kept God even let me keep my gorgeous drop dead good looks and uh, uh, amen don't be no hater Amen. Don't hate. Congratulate, and God may let you participate. Some of y'all drink haterade, and you live on Hater Boulevard, and you eat Hater chips, and you drive a Hater mobile. Quit hating. Learn to cook. Say amen when you can. And the doctor, the neurologist, the chief of neurology came in. He said, Pastor Leonard. Say, I've been doing this a long time. You sure is a lucky man. I said, no, doc. You may know the Bible, but you don't know. You may know the brain, but you don't know the Bible. I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. And I got enough sense. I don't know if you got. After God brought me up, brought me out, brought me through, you ain't going to make me come here and be quiet in the house of God. See, I had what you call a Hezekiah moment. See, some of y'all ain't never had no, y'all know who Hezekiah is? That's the fella in the Bible who Isaiah said, you going to die and not live? And he turned his face and asked God for 15 more years. I'm going to tell you something, folks. If you ever have a Hezekiah moment in your life, you'll stop caring what people say about you because it ain't between me and you. It's between me and God. Well, so now... Now, I find glory to God in everything. There's a fine and fabulous fellowship between my pupil and my retina generated by an active optic nerve in the over column of my cranium that allows me to see. So every time now I see the majestic mountains having been kissed and capped with snow and ice, I want to give God some glory. What would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That's the question that you and I need to answer. That's the question that rings in my ears today. What would it profit me? What would it profit you if we got all of the things we wanted? We, we got the right job. We got the right income. We got 
the right house. We got the right car. We got all of the things we wanted and then lost our soul. That's sad. And, 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 and so you really want to know what the Blessing Connection program is all about. It, it's about helping me. It's about helping you. It's about helping men and women be able to stand before God and hear God say in the life to come, well done. Don't you want to hear God say, well done? I want to hear God say, well done, our good and faithful servant. And so as you watch these videos of people getting baptized, understand what baptism really means. Baptism is really a symbolic act. It represents the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it represents the fact that I have given my life, I am being buried, I am being raised again to live a new life in Christ Jesus. It's, it's the opportunity for me to stand before God and hear God say, the substitution death of Jesus Christ, I no longer see you, I see him. It's Christ taking my place. It's not about my works. It's about the grace of God and that God sent his only begotten son. And so when you see someone get baptized, what they're really saying is that I've heard the good news that God sent his only begotten son. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I will confess with my mouth proudly that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I will repent of my sin. I no longer want to sit on the throne. I want Jesus to sit on the throne. I'm going down. I am getting baptized because I want to be able to say, it's no longer I who lives in me, it's Christ who lives in me. That's what the passage is about in Romans chapter six, verse number four. Let me read it to you. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the father, we, that's you and I, we too may live a new life. Well, that's the plan of salvation. And for today, that's the blessing connection. I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's our joy to uh, share this program with men and women around the world. And I pray it blessed your life. Our service times begin on Sunday morning with Bible study at 9 a.m. with classes for all ages, morning worship, 10 a.m., evening worship, 5 p.m. And on Wednesdays, our midweek Bible study begins at 7 p.m. Please come and be our guest. If you are calling to request prayer, please dial 1-855-45-CONNECT. Our Twitter account is at Connect With Him. If you would like to purchase, call 1-855-45-CONNECT. 